Hi folks, we're back. We're going to add uh, HBr to 1,3-pentadiene today, which sounds like a rollicking good time, doesn't it? So, the way it would typically look is you would just have the HBr and you would just have the pentadiene. So <laughs> it would look something like this if you were given this problem. What I have here is I have a lot of things laid out, right? So I have uh, HBrs, I have the nucleophiles and the electrophiles, and I have the numbering all laid out for you today so that we can have a beginning that looks amazing. Let's say, obviously, if we're looking at HBr here, HBr um, can be attacked from two different places, recognizing that between the 1 and 2 I have a pi bond, it's a conjugated diene because it has two dienes separated by a single bond. That nucleophile could attack the HBr, the H of the Br particularly here, and the electrons from the bond between the H and the Br could go on to the Br. If that possibility happened, right, we would have nothing happened to this double bond. I would have my H add right here because this is um, Markovnikov addition. And I would have my carbocation form right there. Okay. Now from this point, this is, is where things get a little bit more interesting than we expect them to. <laughs> oh, I guess we expect it now, but than you might have except expected them to. Because we have two possibilities here. We can have the Br with its new lone pair, which makes it an overall minus. Just attack this bond, or uh, make a bond between it and the carbocation. Or we could have a possibility of some resonance stabilization where the pi bond moves. Let's do the pi bond first. So if the pi bond moves, there it goes, switch aside, it makes a plus right here. And this is a re resonance stabilized moment. Realize that what you just drew, when you, when you look at these two different molecules, or really transition states, I should say, they're, they're carbocation intermediates, they're exactly the same. You just rotated it 180 degrees, right? So this is not, the resonance stabilization is really not going to do anything to my reaction here. So if that's true, why not just take that Br and react it? Woohoo, there's my double bond. Here's my BR. That's my BR reacting. Woo, that's really bad. Okay, what you just made here, folks, just in case you missed it, because you were trying to pay attention to everything else, that is a chirality center, folks that you just made. So indeed, you have to write two options here. You have to write an option that gives you the BR coming out towards you. How, the way, how did I know, by the way, that that was a chirality center that was just made? I knew that because uh, it has it's a carbon with four different groups around it. All right, and then we need the BR to go back away from us. So let's draw that BR first. Woohoo! And here's my H. So these are the only two options from adding from the 1 2 bond, from the end end bond. Okay? Okay, let's go for something a little more interesting. Oopsie, my arrow was not working with me. Let me move that down a little bit so that you can actually see what's going on. 
So let's go back to seeing whether I can actually draw this arrow. I believe I can. There it is. All right. So let's scroll down just a little bit more here. What are we doing in this second reaction? What we are doing in this second reaction, here's my original uh, lovely reactant molecule. Here's my HBR. In the second reaction, I'm using the nucleophile of the pi bond to attack my H, which looks like a tasty morsel with those extra electrons going on to the BR. What's going to happen here? Well, I did absolutely nothing to that double bond, right? But now, since this is Markovnikov addition, the H is going to add right there, leaving me with a carbocation right there. Two possibilities exist here as well. I mean, this isn't just one possibility at a time. We got multiple things going on. So you can either have the BR. Oh my gosh. Something about that is making it move. Ooh -hoo. All right, let me make this a little bit better. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. There you go. Back to being so much better than it was. All right. And let's go back to this color. We had our lovely carbocation right here, right? All right, so my BR can attack that sucker right where it is. Or you can have resonance stabilization as well. Let's do the resonance stabilization first and see if we get something different, right? So if we have resonance stabilization, what that means is the double bond is closer and can move over faster. Notice that I just went from, in the resonance stabilization, I just went from a second degree, a secondary carbocation, to a primary carbocation. So we would expect in the resonance hybrid this to be more stable as it is uh, honestly, the more stable of the two, but this, the other one does happen. All right, so let's add BR to each of these. If I add BR to this one, I'm going to get my double bond here. I'm going to get my BR right there. And honestly, guys, that is a chirality center, so that's not going to be just as it is, it's going to form two possibilities, right? Let's scroll down a little bit so you can see those two possibilities. You're going to have the BR coming out at you. With the H going back, with my double bond. Here's my double bond again. Now the BR is going away from you. Wow, that is one thick wedge I got going on there. With the H coming out towards you. Both of those possibilities exist. Both of them are important. Those are both part of your final answer. But indeed, let's go back and do a little bit of reacting with this primary carbocation as well. If I react with that primary carbocation and move that double bond over, I just get a BR right here. And the question is, did I make a uh, chirality center right here? No, I didn't, folks, because notice that this carbon has a BR, but then it just has two bonds around it. Okay, um, That means it has two H's around it, and a chirality center has to have four different groups around it to be made. So this is a possibility. Let's erase that star so that you don't think it's something weird. Ooh. All right, we have the possibility over here. This is a possibility. This is a possibility. And scrolling up, these are possibilities. 
and we want to say which one of these are all of these different and they look to all be different isn't that awesome that is totally cool now in terms of labeling these this would be the one for adduct right um, this is this one is just an addition so um, it's an addition at the at the um, uh, this guy is just an addition. It's an addition. It's an addition of uh, across that three to four pi bond. And this guy would be called the one or the one two adduct because it was the addition across that one two bond. Oh, and I kind of messed that up, so let me make that a little bit prettier. I like to make things pretty. I'm a little anal retentive about such things. There you go. All right, one two adduct. Now, really, what's really interesting here, folks, is the difference between a one two adduct and a one four adduct is usually that a 1-2 adduct is what we call the kinetic product. Right? So what's interesting here is that you're going to have the kinetic product form because it has a lower activation energy. Um, for the attack of the nucleophile. And by the nucleophile here, what I mean is I mean the second nucleophile. So here it would be the BR. Now let's just go back up for a moment here and see that. Here you formed a secondary carbocation, right? That's a secondary carbocation. No matter how you uh, drew it, it came out with the same thing. So it was resonance stabilized. So this is indeed going to be an awesome product that's going to form first. Okay. It forms fastest. So that means at low temperatures, it will be prevalent. How prevalent? Depends on your other conditions, but usually pretty pre prevalent. The 1,4 addict is fascinating because it's what we call the thermodynamic product. And the thermodynamic product is fascinating because indeed it has a higher it has a higher activation energy for both I mean it has the same activation energy basically for the first step as the one two addict, but it has a higher activation energy for the second nucleophile attack, nucleophilic attack. But what's fascinating here is that it's the one that's prevalent usually at equilibrium. So that means that if you had higher temperatures, this one would be the one that's formed. So we would have a majority of 1, 4. This is really the first time that we've been able to form different things at different temperatures and have different reasoning for why they form. And so this makes the reaction of um, some kind of HX, so hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, 
maybe even hydro hydroiodic acid, although I is big and fat and doesn't always do what we want it to. Um, it's not big and fat. Maybe I, j I just called it I fat, sorry. Um, it is a large, large atom that often will not do exactly what we want it to in terms of having some flexibility as CL and BR are. But in this kind of idea, wow, we can make different things happen depending on the conditions. That is awesome, guys. So I'm out.